In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to continue our first look series at the new features in PowerDirector version 16. This particular tutorial focuses on a tool called Audio Ducking. Now the ducking here has nothing to do with the feathered animal. It's more like the verb where you duck under something to avoid a problem. So what we have here is a video with an audio track and then a narration track. And what I want to do is I want the audio in this particular component to duck under the audio of the audio track so you can hear it clearly. Otherwise, we have noise at the same frequency that gets a bit confusing. Let me explain this by having you listen to this. We're going to play a little bit of the video clip with that audio active. So we have the audio of the parade and the video. I'm going to turn the audio off and then I'm going to go back and you'll hear a little bit of the audio of the narration track all by itself. This is an example of recording a narration for audio ducking. When I pause, you should hear the background of the parade louder. When I resume talking, the software should lower the background so you can hear my voice more clearly. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. So if I put them on together and try to play it, it gets a bit confusing. Listen. This is an example of recording a narration for audio ducking. So what you could do is you could go in and manually raise the volume in your timeline in these particular moments. We'll enlarge it here. And then you could uh, automatically raise and lower between the gaps. But there's a much easier way now in version 16 where the software will do that. Now, if I try to audio duck this, if I click on edit audio, I have an audio ducking option in that. I don't have it if I click, if I simply right click on the, if I click here and click edit audio. All I have is audio director and wave editor. So the way to get to it is I right click and then I choose the edit audio and I can audio duck the clip. Now you have different options in audio ducking. Let's look at what each of them. Sensitivity. Okay, this is the sensitivity of the master clip, the one I clicked on, to the other clip. In this one case, it's the sensitivity to my narration clip. How well is it listening, as it were, to what's going on underneath it? Then the second is the ducking level. This is how far do I lower the volume when the narration kicks in. And the next is a fade out or fade in duration. And notice it's very small. It's only two or three tenths of a second. I think three tenths is the default. So you can make it uh, a fade in quickly or slowly. But this number will normally be very small. Then the other option is to apply to all the clips in the same track. Now these start out about 50% default. And so what I'll do is we'll start there. And I wasn't happy with it in my particular example. But now that I have this set, I'll simply click OK. And now I have the, the audio ducking active in these tracks. But notice this track barely changed. Listen. This is an example of recording a narration for audio ducking. See, 50% for me doesn't do the trick. So I'm going to click on it again. We'll do Control Z to undo. And I'll right click again. Go back to my um, edit audio, audio ducking. Now I'm going to increase the sensitivity to over 80%. And I'll we'll hit the ducking level to maybe about 75%. And I'll click OK. And now you see a much more dramatic change in the audio ducking. And if I play this, you'll really notice a difference in this case. This is an example of recording a narration for audio ducking. When I pause, you should hear the background of the parade. Audio. 
When I resume talking, the software should lower the background so you can hear my voice more clearly. This back and forth is something you can do manually, but it's a lot easier if the software does it for you. Okay, so you see how it works. And you can experiment with it. I can do Control Z as, uh, as much as I want to and get back to the original. Or what I can also do is I can actually edit these waypoints uh, manually if I want to tweak it. But audio ducking saves you a lot of clicking on the audio track to try to match the two. It's a nice feature and a great addition in CyberLink PowerDirector version 16.